Okay, the last part we will be looking at today is about estimating uh, motion within an, a video. And that can be uh, named uh, different ways. Uh, often we will talk about optical flow for estimating this kind of motion. So we would like to figure out if we have um, a certain uh, image here and then how does this pixel move from time t to t plus 1? So does it move from here to this location, or how does it actually move? And there are some quite nice methods uh, that allows us to, to figure this out. And I'll try to, to look into uh, at least one of these methods here. And in general, there are two types of, of methods here. There are what is known as feature-based methods, where you locate some objects or locations in, in an image that is uh, easy to to uh, locate in uh, the, the next frames to, to look at. That could be corners in images or certain textured areas. In general, things that you can point out and say, okay, this feature is exactly here. And then there are also what is known as uh, dense methods um, that make some assumptions about what we are looking at in the video. And um, then using that, these uh, estimates to, to actually track the objects. And what we will be using here is to assume that uh, the object brightness is constant. That is, the brightness of an object that moves across the scene will not change which allows us to make some uh, simplifications. It also requires us to limit uh, these motions to small movements, um, but there are some things to, some ways to, to address this, uh, this issue. So what we want to figure out is this uh, optical flow, what which is the apparent motion of objects or points in a video or image sequence. So what we will be uh, looking at here is um, some of the constraints we are, are using um, for these methods. And there will this be this uh, brightness constancy constraint and small motion constraint. So let's see uh, how things uh, actually uh, work out. And I think it works best to, to take this on on the board. So let's do that. The idea or reasoning behind this is that we have an image frame. And in that image, we can specify the intensity at a certain location specified by the x and y coordinates and uh, a time. Uh, coordinate like this. And if we assume that we have a uh, constant brightness, then it means that this value, if you're looking at, at the same object, should be exactly equal to the intensity. Um, at position x plus u, where u is the motion from frame t to t plus 1, the y coordinate plus v and t plus 1. And that should be the exact same thing. And this is this is what comes from this uh, brightness, uh, constant brightness assumption. I will try to rewrite this so um, it will be a a bit easier to to work with, and to make this uh, rewrite, we rely on that we only have uh, small uh, movements, which means that we can uh, replace uh, small movements. That means that u and v are small. And this allows us to simplify this expression uh, somewhat. 
first I will rewrite this so we have a, a zero over here. And then we'll have the right hand side. So I of x plus u, y plus v, and t plus 1 minus i of x, y, and t. And then um, we can try to, to rewrite this. And if we use this kind of, of notion where we have i with a subscript of x, that, and that means the uh, derivative of the intensity function with respect to, to x, this will uh, simplify the notation quite much to, to use this. So the idea is here, instead of um, having the intensity evaluated at, at two different points, we would uh, replace this with a, a Taylor expansion around x and y. So we need to take these uh, u and v values and, and move it out. So we have i of x and y and t plus 1 plus and then our adjustment for the u direction which is how far we went in that direction multiplied with the image derivative according to the x direction plus how far we went in the y direction that is v multiplied with the derivative in the y direction and then we finally have this minus x y and t um, so that at least uh, simplifies the, the process a, a bit. And actually, I might not be able to uh, use an equal sign here, but at least they are comparable or similar to, to each other. Um, and now we can compare this value here and this value here. So we only have a change in the time value in, in this location. And we can also use this uh, notation to to see, OK, how does this change in, in time? And now it and the step length in, in the time direction um, is only a single step. So if we take this one, subtract this one, we just have the um, the derivative in respect of, or with respect of time. So we'll have this i t, and then plus i x times u plus i y times v. Or, and this expression can actually be written in, in a bit simpler way where we still have the time-wise derivative of the intensity of a certain pixel, plus, and then we have the gradient of the image at the position, and the gradient is just a, a vector containing the spatial derivatives of the intensity function. And then we multiply that with uh, a vector containing both the u and, and v values, like this. And this should still be equal to zero as, as what we started with. So what we have here is we have the how the intensity of a certain pixel changes over time and how the intensity of the image changes when moving up and down and, and left to right. And using these two pieces of information, we should be able to estimate both the displacement in x and the displacement in y, as, or the y and v uh, values here. There's just one issue. We have one equation here. But we have two unknowns. And that makes it quite hard to, to solve. What we need is additional equations to be able to, to solve for, for all of these uh, unknowns. And we can actually do that by um, 
introducing uh, um, some similar equations um, and see, okay, how does, does this look like? And the main idea is if we want to track how uh, a certain pixel uh, is, is moving from one location to or from, from one frame to the next, it might be beneficial to actually look at what is around this pixel. It takes some time to, to draw this, but I, I hope you get the idea. So instead of only looking at a single pixel, that is the, the center in here, we will look at a 5x5 five five matrix um, of values near uh, or just a, a, around this uh, location. And for each location in, in this uh, area, that is one here, one here, one here. So in, in total, uh, 25 uh, positions. We will set up uh, similar equations as uh, the one we we set up here, just where we are changing what is the um, what is the time derivative and what is the, the spatial uh, derivatives here, and then require that the motion of the central pixel is the exact same as everything in, in this window around it. And this is what is known as an aperture oh, uh, problem. I don't know exactly what it did there, but that wasn't the intention. Um, um, so we are looking at at a bit larger region than what we actually want to to compute uh, the motion for. Um, So we assume that the displacement in X and Y, the U and V values are equal for all pixels in this uh, five by five window. And when that's in, in place, we're actually able to, to solve this uh, optical flow problem in a quite decent way. I have a, a small demonstration of this that I would like to, to run here. And what we have here is a drone recording of the uh, parking lot um, next to, to the tech building. And what is shown next to it here is a color-coded version of, of the de detected uh, motion in the frame. And a uh, red color means that something is moving to the right. And we have a cyan color up here which means that something is moving to the left. And in, in a short while, I think this will uh, turn and, and go in a different direction. And therefore it will also change color. Here we have something that is uh, close to blue that is going to uh, upwards and in the left uh, direction. And now the, the lorry or land down here is a more light yellow color, meaning that it is going both to the to right and and downwards. So this is an example of, of how we can visualize data that comes out of this uh, optical flow algorithm. Um, so if we have a, a steady image, then we can actually interpret the, the output like this and get a quite nice idea about how things are, are moving around. Good. I hope this provides a, 
a kind of overview of what is possible to do when analyzing images containing motion. And you will definitely need that for, for your next mini project, uh, but more on that later. See you.